what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new handheld that hit the market known as the Odroid Go Ultra this is coming to us from Hard Kernel obviously the same people that make the Odroid single board computers and when it comes down to it this is definitely going to be the most powerful handheld that they've released on the market so far because it's actually powered by the Amlogic S922X and if that SOC sounds familiar to you that's because it's the same exact CPU that they used in their Odroid N2 Plus which was a great performing single board computer but now we've got it in a handheld form factor with a five inch display and built-in controls we've also got a 4000 milliamp hour battery with this unit and it might be disappointing to some people but you know with their older handhelds they always came as do-it-yourself kits unfortunately the ultra is only sold as a fully assembled kit for 111 dollars We've also got this really odd USB charging cable, and we'll talk about this in a second, but I did want to get the other one out of the box. So we've taken a look at the gray version they offer, but uh, one of my favorites is always a crystal clear version, and that's what we have here. So we can see the internals. I've always been a huge fan of these crystal clear devices or atomic purple. And speaking of atomic purple, with the old Odroid Go, I did a full video on dyeing the case here. It came in crystal clear, but you can make this look atomic purple if you want to. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. So checking this thing out, over here on the left hand side from the top to the bottom, we've got our select button, a D-pad, an analog stick, and we've got two extra function buttons here. Now it's really up to the developer of the operating system on what these buttons do, but they can be mapped to basically anything. Moving over to the right hand side, we've got our start button, A, B, X, Y, another analog stick, and two more buttons over here near the bottom of the unit. Now I do want to mention that the D-pad and the buttons here are using conductive rubber underneath, and they actually feel really good. I kind of wish they were a bit bigger, but uh, overall they do work out pretty well. And up top, we've got our shoulder buttons and trigger buttons. These triggers are not analog. We've also got our power button and volume up and down. As for I.O., we get one full-size USB. We also have USB Type-C and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And finally, down here at the bottom, we've got a micro SD card slot. Now we can run an operating system from this, and most of the time that's exactly what we're going to be doing with these retro operating systems. But this does come with 16 gigabytes of onboard eMMC storage also. And what makes this great is we can install our operating system directly to the internal eMMC storage, and it's really easy to get into storage mode. Your PC will see it kind of as a USB drive once you're in that mode, so it's really easy to flash that OS over. But once we have the operating system on that storage, we can have all of our games on a removable micro SD card. Now one thing I wanted to talk about here was that odd charger that's included. As you can see, we've got uh, two full-size USBs and USB Type-C. So one end is going to plug into your charger, the other end is going to plug into your full-size USB port here, and USB Type-C on the Odroid Go Ultra. This is going to enable fast charging when that battery's really low. They do have an explanation over on their website, and they're saying that due to the dual PMIC architecture, the charging time is very slow and the battery is fully discharged. So they've come up with this custom cable here, and once you plug in that full-size USB and USB Type-C, you'll be able to charge your device up much faster. It's a little odd that they had to do this. I mean, USB Type-C can definitely carry a lot of current. But I guess since they're using that dual PMIC, we're going to have to use this cable to get faster charging out of the Odroid Go Ultra. Taking a look at the specs, we're actually not doing bad here for a handheld retro console. For the CPU, we've got the Amlogic S922X. This is a 6-core ARM SoC. We've got 4 A73 cores at 2.2 GHz and 2 A53 cores at 2 GHz. The Ultra comes with 2GB of LPDDR4 RAM, 16GB of built-in eMMC storage, plus we have micro SD card support, a 5-inch TFT LCD non-touch display, and this might let some people down because, you know, running Android on something like this, especially with that S922, would have been awesome. It's still possible, but if this had a touch screen, it'd just be a lot easier to navigate that operating system. We've got a user replaceable 4000 milliamp hour battery and they're claiming up to six hours of continuous gameplay and I'd say that was with the screen brightness down and playing something like NES. When you move up to the harder to emulate stuff like PSP, I'd say you could squeeze three and a half hours out of this unit. And as for the operating system, this is going to run Linux, but somebody's already working on porting Android over here. Like I mentioned, we don't have a touch screen, but you could still navigate with the analog stick, and it really depends on what software is installed. 
We could always use the analog stick as kind of a mouse cursor, so hopefully that is the case down the road. But right now, Hard Kernel is offering their Ubuntu Minimal Emulation Station image. You can flash it to the internal eMMC or a micro SD card, and it's basically a bare bones version of Emulation Station. But not to worry, because I was doing some digging on the forum, and I noticed that Steve from Tech Toy Tinker already has a retro arena build for this. It's still a bit early, but it's a lot more fleshed out than the stock operating system. It's got a lot more features. And right now, there is support for up to 100 and something systems in that operating system. And we will test that out in just a second, but right now I've got the stock operating system going. We're going to go with some lighter stuff. And uh, since this is using the same SoC that's in the Odroid N2+, Bado Sarah isn't far at all down the road. I mean, it might already be out at the time of this video being posted. But as you can see with this minimal emulation station image, all the basics are here. I've got some games loaded up. We can actually use the scraper. We don't have Wi-Fi built in. Odroid just doesn't like adding Wi-Fi to any of their devices for some reason. And yeah, it is a functional base image. Not a lot of settings that we can mess around with right now, but yeah, this will change down the road for sure. We've got a really nice little chipset here. And one cool feature that I've always loved about their base images is just kind of that quick resume feature. So I've already started up Adventure Island, but it's going to take me right back to where I left off. And obviously, this is a lower-end emulator. This chip is going to handle this lower-end stuff really well. Now, when it comes to sound, we're working with a mono speaker on the rear, and it is pretty easy to kind of block that speaker off with your hand. And once you set it down, you can see it's very muffled, but it sounds good. I mean, once it's out in the open and you have that volume up, it's not a bad mono speaker that they chose to use in this thing. So I guess next we'll just go with some GBA, we'll move up to N64, and then we'll take a look at the other operating system that's available right now. I just love that quick resume. Uh, GBA is another one that's going to run fine on this system, but you know, we get GBA emulation on much lower end hardware, so I definitely want to test out some higher end stuff. N64 is one that a lot of people really want out of these handhelds, at least full speed N64, and the S922X has more than enough power to do it. In fact, on the N2 Plus, which has the same chip, little more RAM, but the same exact CPU, we can get 1080p N64 emulation of the Android, no sweat. I mean, it does work really well. It's a matter of the operating system being optimized enough, and you know, once Botocera comes to this, we're going to get some really great performance. But even with this base image, N64 works fantastically. Here's Diddy Kong Racing, not the hardest one to emulate, but it's still super fun to play, and especially on a handheld. I don't even notice any kind of audio issues or anything like that with N64 so far. So yeah, I mean, just straight out of the box, we're getting great N64 performance. But I wanted to test one more here, so we'll move over to GoldenEye 007. And this is another one that runs great on the Odroid Go Ultra. So this is a super dark game, and unfortunately Rare never put a brightness adjuster inside of the game, so it might be a bit hard to see, but this is fully playable on the Ultra. So yeah, the Ubuntu Minimal Emulation Station image that they offer over on the website is working pretty well. But we've got another one to take a look at, and that's the Retro Arena. So Steve from Tech Toy Tinker put this one together for the Odroid Go Ultra. He's actually had a development unit for a little while now. And uh, he'll have a full-blown operating system for this very soon. I'll leave a link to his website in the description and the forum post where you can download this. He also has a modified version of the stock operating system if you're interested in trying that out. But this image here does have support for up to 105 different systems. I believe that's what it said in the forum post. It's a lot of stuff here, but it doesn't mean that everything that's going to boot up on this is going to run at full speed. I mean, even GameCube is bootable on this unit. I'm sure there are some games that are going to be playable on the S922X, but not everything from that GameCube library will be. Uh, next one I wanted to test was some Dreamcast, and while we're here, we can actually test out the D-pad with Marvel vs. Capcom 2, see if we can pull off some special moves. Yeah, that D-pad is working. Um, it is a bit thin. I mean, I, I actually I don't know how to explain it, but I kind of wish that, you know, the up, down, left, and right were a bit fatter on the unit itself along with larger A, B, and X, Y buttons, but you can definitely get used to playing this, and uh, we're getting some great Dreamcast performance here, and I know for a fact that using Redream in Android on this same chip here net some really great performance, up to 1080p Dreamcast on the S922X. And with the way this operating system is set up right now, we're not quite matching that Android performance, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's really early for this, 
And by this, I'm not talking about the SOC. That's been on the market for a while. Emulation performance on the S922X is well documented. It's just a matter of getting all of those optimizations that have been had with this chip over to an operating system that's going to function properly on the Ultra. Next up, we've got some PSP emulation using the standalone version of PPSSPP. From the settings, I've noticed that we only have access to OpenGL in this operating system right now, but this chip does fully support Vulkan. And we're going to see a nice little increase, but the way it is right now, Tekken 6, 2x resolution, OpenGL with no frame skip, getting full speed. I know it's a bit hard to see that FPS counter up in the top right hand corner, but we're not quite at full speed. With the implementation of the Vulcan back end, it will run this game at 2x using the standalone version of PPSSPP. I also wanted to test out some Sega Saturn. We're using Yoba Sanshiro here, and that FPS counter is fully visible. Unfortunately, we're not quite at 60, so there is some work to be done with this operating system. And the final thing I wanted to take a look at was a little bit of a Thomas Wade and Naomi emulation. Here's Dolphin Blue, and this is using Flycast to emulate the game. We're so close to hitting that steady 60 with this. This thing definitely has potential, and it's only a matter of time before a lot of the other operating systems that are already up and running really well on the S922X are ported over to the Odroid Go Ultra. And at $111, I don't think it's a super bad deal. We do have a nice, powerful ARM CPU here. But there is one thing that's bugging me, and it really comes down to that charger cable they included. It really feels more like a workaround than a fix. Um, you know, having to plug in both of those really doesn't make sense, especially if you've already got like a Wi-Fi dongle plugged into your full-size USB port. And really, that's the only way we can get network access with this, whether you want to use an Ethernet adapter or a Wi-Fi dongle on that full-size USB. And when you've got both of those plugged in, you're not going to have access to that data port anymore. I will be doing some more testing. This was really just a first look, super early software. And as soon as Botocera is available for this, I mean, I'm actually really excited about that. I will be making another video. I know how well that operating system performs on the Odroid N2 Plus, and we have the same hardware here, so we should see the same performance. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look video. One thing I'd like to know from you is, uh, what do you think about the Odroid Go Ultra? Is it something you're thinking about? Maybe once we can see some better software running on here, or at least software with all of the optimizations that are already out for the S922X, or are you just going to skip it? If you have any questions, or if there's any specific emulators or games you want to see running in the next one, let me know down below. And if you're interested in learning more, maybe picking up an Odroid Go Ultra, I'll leave some links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.